Okay, my darling. All we need is a miracle series of uh, valve jobs. And today, video number eight. And I want to say, you might notice we're cropped in a little tighter because I have these drawings I want you to pay attention to and this is actually going to be a short one hopefully and hopefully I won't get yelled at too bad by Miss Amy because number seven sort of ran long so this one's going to run under and how could that be if we're going to talk about high performance well everything applies from number seven except some angles that uh so let's get started see what we got okay Single angle OEM valve seat and valve angles. One angle. That's it. One angle on the valve, one angle on the valve seat. Period. That's a straight up, straight down uh, OEM valve job. Now, high performance valve job. Three angles or more. So what we do is we cut into the throat, which moves the contact patch. By the way, if you see over here, if the contact, contact trail was here, if we start cutting an angle here, it moves that toward the edge. That can be good, that can be bad, but anyway, that's how we manipulate the contact. And then if we have primary angle is 30 degrees, and then 15 degrees from that, we have a lighter angle. And here's the reason why this is so important is right over here on the OEM, there's ridges, there's a ridge line between the neck of the valve and the ceiling area, usually right here. And that creates what's called an aerodynamic trip. That means the flow coming down here is going to hit that edge and it's going to tumble. And over here, where we have such an abrupt change of direction, guess what? It can't go around the corner fast enough, and so we get another tumble. So it would actually look something like this. I'm going to take away these numbers. There's the 15 angle, 30 angle, 60 angle. Let's take them away. And then I'm going to grab my little blue marking pen and I'm going to draw some airflow lines. So what happens when the airflow gets right here and hits that sharp edge, it's going to create a little mini vortexes here. Tripped. And as it tries to change direction, it can't change fast enough. So you get some vortex shedding here. And what this basically does is the airflow comes down. It's fast. Highest velocity is always in the center, slowest velocities on the walls or the outside surfaces and what happens is, is now you've got all of this air has been squeezed in by this turbulence coming off these trips. And there is it. It's called vena contracta. Engineering term. You young engineers, look up vena contracta if you already don't know what it is. Now over here, where we basically are radiusing making a nice big gentle turn, the airflow can hug that around and the airflow out here doesn't have that trip. And so guess what? We can get, uh, we can get more throughput per millisecond. Absolutely. We can get more air through that door than this door because we do away with the trips. Also notice over here, see this is back cut 15 degrees on the bow take that trip out. Ah. And, well, does that really, I mean, how fast can the air go? Does that really make any difference? Well, let's see. The target airflow in the intake port, 300 to 350 feet per second. Okay. Well, what is that? Well, I can tell you what that is. That's pretty fast. How fast is it? Well, for comparison, 60 miles an hour is 88 feet per second. Uh-oh. So we're looking at 300 around 200 miles an hour and at 350 about 240 miles an hour. Airflow hitting in the edge and tunneling. Ta-da! Increasing the vena contracta here, which chokes down the flow area. Duh. So. 
Is this a measurable amount? Yes, you actually see it on the flow bench. A three angle valve job plus a back cut valve will greatly increase the flow. When I say greatly, I don't mean it doubles it or triples it. I mean 10, 5, 10, 15 percent increase in flow on some engines. That is a significant for just uh, knocking off some corners. Okay, now on these contact areas here, just a quick little information real quick. Um, Intakes one and a half millimeters wide. This is the target zone for most what's called headmasters, people that do uh, uh, head work for, for a living. And from the exhaust side, two to two and a half millimeter wide. And that's for, of course, for a larger footprint, larger heat path to cool the exhaust valve. Okay, now that's basically it. This is what a high performance valve job looks like. Now, Next video, I'm going to talk about some hardware to actually do these cuts. And because I don't have the, the hardware on hand, I want you, my gentle viewers out there, to please go to Google. And I want you to do a search for valve seat cutters. And then once that comes up, go up in the uh, two bar overhead, the selector, and select images. And look at some of the hardware that we can talk about in detail next video. Okay, boys and girls, gearheads, motorheads, petrolheads, all out there, and this Amy, of course. See you next video. Go do your projects.